I'm Susan e. Woods. Welcome to the Managing Human Resources Nonprofit Tutorial. Again, I'm Susan Woods. I am the founder of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions, and I am a nonprofit consultant. Before we get into talking about managing human resources, please allow me just a few moments to give you some background information about me and about the services that I provide. I started a nonprofit organization in 2003, and I managed two programs underneath that organizational structure for 10 years. I earned three nonprofit management certificates, one from Duke University, one from Wake Forest University, and one from Winthrop University. I am also a three-time graduate of Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I earned a Master of Business Administration degree, a Master of Arts in Teaching degree, and a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. The services I provide through Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions are as follows. I provide in-person nonprofit classes. Specifically, I teach in-person classes on the first and third Saturdays of the month. I provide online nonprofit classes for people who cannot attend the in-person classes. I also have a YouTube channel called Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions, which includes a lot of classes that are free of charge. I provide 501c3 startup services. I help people across the United States start their own 501c3 nonprofit organizations. And I also help people reinstate their 501c3 status when they have been automatically revoked by the Internal Revenue Service. So I offer 501c3 reinstatement services too. So these are the services that I offer through Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. Let's talk about my teaching style. Of course, I rely on my educational credentials that I've earned over the years. I also share real life experiences when I teach. I'm transparent and honest. I tell the truth about the good, bad, and the ugly that I've experienced while operating a nonprofit organization. And I'm also structured and respectful in the way that I deliver my information and in, in the way I facilitate my classes. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of that preliminary information out of the way regarding me and my background information, educational credentials, and the way that I teach, let's talk about the topic at hand. Managing Human Resources Nonprofit Tutorial. Human Resources. We have to have human resources in order to operate a nonprofit organization. Of course, that goes without saying, but we need to step back and make sure that we manage human resources correctly. The human resources that we're going to talk about include board of directors advisory committees, compensated employees, contractors who use a form 1099, and volunteers. These are the human resources that we are going to discuss briefly in this nonprofit tutorial. First, let's talk about the board of directors. The board of directors are the people who govern the operations of the nonprofit organization according to the bylaws the nonprofit established. So what is a board of directors? The board of directors in more detail is the mandatory governing body responsible for adopting sound, ethical, and legal governance, implementing financial management policies, ensuring adequate resources to advance its mission, serving as guardians of the public trust, and serving as ambassadors and securing investments. So that's the board of directors. That's the role of the board of directors. Now, when you're deciding upon who to invite to serve on the board of directors as a volunteer member because they're not paid, make sure that you choose the people who you believe will be capable of operating under these guidelines. So let's talk about the board structure briefly. The board structure includes, of course, the board of directors with five roles, president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and at-large member. 
the board of directors includes an odd number of members to prevent ties when voting on different topics. Most nonprofit organizations use the five board members listed in the chart here. I don't provide detailed information or descriptions about the different board roles. However, I do provide that information in the full class, which is called the How to Manage 501c3 Nonprofit Organizations that I will discuss a little later on. The Advisory Committee. The Advisory Committee are considered subject matter experts, or SMEs. The Advisory Committee normally includes someone from legal or the legal field, the accounting field, insurance, and human resources, and public relations. You normally have people serving on your Advisory Committee in a subject matter expert role from these areas, legal, accounting, insurance, and human resources. We call upon people from these areas on an as needed basis. You're not gonna have them on your team at all times, but of course, whenever you do need their assistance, you would be expected to pay whatever their fees are to provide that expertise that you need. The next group of people that we would need would be compensated employees. And the people who receive payment for their services are considered compensated employees or paid employees, people who are on the payroll, in other words. So compensated employees are people who are paid for their work, such as the executive director, the program manager, teachers, or secretaries. Or, of course, these roles are depending upon dependent upon the type of nonprofit organization you have. So compensated employees may be different or will be different depending upon your organization. But most organizations will have the executive director, the program manager, and someone in an administrative capacity, such as a secretary, if not teachers. Let's talk about the next group of people who are contractors. Now, contractors are the people who complete specific tasks for a short period of time. You're not going to need them on your staff all of the time or on your team all of the time. They're just, again, a group of people who are used as needed, and they have a specific skill set that you need for a short period of time. For example, the Boyd Contracting Company is donating time to build the obstacles courses, rock climbing walls, and other things required to offer summer programs for youth. So this would be an example of a contracting company. A contracting company may or may not donate their time, but the reason they're designated as contractors is because you are not going to observe them or manage them directly every day. You are hiring, hiring them because they have a specific skill set like this contracting company who um, has a skill set skill set to build um, obstacle courses, rock climbing walls, and other things required for summer youth programs. So you're not going to be monitoring them. That's why they're contractors instead of compensated employees. You're going to hire them and entrust them to do the work. And then you have your volunteers, the people who dedicate their time to complete certain tasks that they enjoy to help your nonprofit organization reach its full potential and meet its objectives that they have promised to meet um, in the community. So you have volunteers, people who just say, I want to help. I want to dedicate my time and I want to help and I want to complete these tasks. And I put here that they enjoy. Never ask a volunteer to perform tasks that they don't enjoy because they're not going to do a good job if they do that. So some examples of volunteers would be people who volunteer their time and expertise to help the program succeed. For example, a local culinary school is allowing their interns to volunteer as food servers. 
So this serves a, a dual purpose. It's a win-win. These interns are having an, an opportunity to demonstrate their skills as food servers, but at the same time, the nonprofit organization is benefiting from having volunteers, people who are providing their services at no charge. So let's talk about team development now. We've talked about all of the components of a human resources team for a nonprofit organization. Let's talk about how do we develop people for success. Team development is a formal process used to develop team members to implement the program services successfully. So team development includes the following, the following steps. One, determine roles needed. Next, create descriptions of the roles that you need. Next, determine the salaries of the roles. Next, recruit applicants. Next, screen the applicants. Next, interview applicants. Next, hire applicants. Next, host an orientation session. And next, facilitate training classes. So these are the steps that you should use to develop your team. Now, of course, you can go through and you can reorganize these steps to suit the needs of your organization, but these are the primary steps that you will use to develop your team. So hosting an orientation session is so important to create an orientation session that is going to be beneficial to the whole team. One mistake that I made when I was operating my nonprofit organization was when I would hire people, they would meet on the first day of their jobs. That's when they would actually meet their team members on the first day on the job. And you know how hectic that can be when you're first starting a new job. I wish I would have hosted an orientation session or a luncheon or something to allow them to meet each other before the first day of work, that would have allowed them to build some type of camaraderie and some type of um, uh, networking opportunities so that they could get to know each other before they met for the first time um, on the job. So that's just a, a, learn, a lesson learned for me. So when you host an orientation session, this is your preparation checklist that I suggest, the orientation preparation checklist. Reserve a facility to host. Provide delicious catered food. Anytime you want to host an event, having catered food is always a good idea. Create an agenda to guide the session. Don't allow the session to just be free-flowing, ad-lib type of things. Have it organized. So create an agenda to guide the session, create an information presentation or an informational presentation, facilitate team building activities, create some type of activity that's fun as a team building activity to help people really get to know each other. And discuss the orientation information packet. You should always have an information packet um, to share with people um, at the orientation session. Training. Training your team is crucial to success. You cannot expect to be successful if you don't train your team. The executive director will facilitate customized basic training sessions and short-term on-the-job training for the compensated employees and volunteers. Yes, volunteers must be trained too. That's so important. A lot of times people feel like, well, you know, they're volunteering, so we don't need to provide any type of training for them. Yes, you do. They need to know what the expectations are for their volunteer roles, even though they're not being paid. The executive director is normally the person who will facilitate the training for compensated employees and for volunteers because more than likely they've developed the job roles for compensated employees and for volunteers. T 
team development stages. There are four stages required for successful team development. So we just don't expect people to gel as soon as they start working together. There are some stages that the team members must go through before they are expected to be successful performing their job duties. So let's talk about the team development stages. Step one, or stage one, the forming stage. In this stage, most team members are positive, polite, and anxious. They don't fully understand the tasks that are ahead of them yet. Step two, or stage two, is the storming stage. Storming often starts where there is conflict between team members, natural working styles. This is the stage where teams can fail if intervention is not implemented. You can't expect a group of people to be placed together and just work flawlessly together in the very beginning. That's just not going to happen. You're going to have a storming stage because people's personalities are going to start conflicting. Their working styles are going to conflict. So you have this stage where you must um, intervene if it becomes too much, if it, if it becomes too disruptive. So that's the role of the executive director to really observe and make sure that they are on top of monitoring, monitoring this particular stage. Stage three, the norming stage. This is when people start to resolve their differences, appreciate their strengths, and respect leadership authority. Things are starting to normalize. And stage four is the performance stage. And this is where the team works together to achieve the goals without friction. The manager is then able to delegate and trust their employees to get the jobs done. So you have four stages of team development and you can expect it doesn't matter how small or large your team is. You will, you can expect to go through each of these four stages. It's just something that's going to happen. Ongoing management. Now, once you have your team established and they are performing, of course, we have to manage them on an ongoing basis. That means monitor their performance closely. Not micromanage, but monitor. Make sure that everyone is performing their job duties according to their job descriptions. Provide reviews. Make sure that you talk to people about their job performance. Provide reviews of how well they're doing on their jobs and be willing and able to provide constructive feedback if needed. Reward and promote. If people are doing an excellent job or they're meeting their um, objectives, job objectives, then we should reward them and promote them when feasible. On the other hand, if they're not doing a good job, we should, be, we should feel comfortable with reprimanding them or in some cases terminating their employment. That's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. I know I had to terminate an employee and it's not comfortable at all to do that. But you have to do it if that's in the best interest of the nonprofit organization. So summary, summary for this Managing Human Resources nonprofit tutorial. We talked about the board of directors. We talked about the advisory committees. We talked about compensated employees, contractors who are the Form 1099. That's what we use for contractors and volunteers. We talked about how each role is needed to be successful for the nonprofit organization. So what's next? Continue learning. Continue learning. This is an ongoing learning opportunity. And this nonprofit tutorial entitled Managing Human Resources includes only one component of the full How to Manage 501c3 Nonprofit Organizations class. Just one component. 
The full class includes the human resource management section, which is, of course, what we talked about in this tutorial, but it is not. This tutorial does not include all of the information that we discuss in the human resources component of the full how to manage 501c3 nonprofit organizations class. The next component in that class that we talk about is financial resources management. And finally, we talk about image and public relations management. That, that's the full class. Again, we only talked about a portion of the human resources management piece in this tutorial, but the full class includes these three components, human resource management, financial resources management, and image and public relations management. So how do you enroll in the full how to manage 501c3 nonprofit organizations online class? Well, you go to www.trustsusanwoods.com or asksusanwoods.com, either one. Number two, you click on nonprofit classes, select nonprofit classes option. Then you select the online classes option. And then you select the online fundamental nonprofit classes. And you will see the how to manage 501c3 nonprofit organizations as one of the classes you can select to complete. In closing, I invite you to follow me on Facebook. Again, I'm Susan Woods, and I am the founder of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. You can follow me on Facebook. I have three Facebook pages. I have three Facebook imprints, if you will. The first one is the Carolinas Grassroots Nonprofit Professionals Group. And this Facebook group is for nonprofit professionals in North and South Carolina um, to share information about their nonprofit organizations and to request assistance. The second page that I have, or the second imprint that I have, is Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. This Facebook page includes information about in person and online nonprofit classes and specific topics that impact the nonprofit sector. And last, the grant writers forum group. This is a Facebook group that allows nonprofit grant writers to share information about RFPs and grant writing techniques. It also allows grant writers to promote their grant writing businesses. So again, thank you so much for taking the time from your busy schedule to enroll or to take advantage of this managing human resources nonprofit tutorial. I hope the information that I provided in this tutorial benefits your nonprofit organization. And I also invite you to learn more about managing human resources, managing financial resources, and managing image and public relations in the How to Manage 501c3 Nonprofit Organizations full class. Thank you again for joining. Have a great evening.